be a slightly difficult video to do. I always uh, confound people when I try to get deep. So how do I keep things simple and yet get deep at the same time? That's the really hard part. Keep it simplex and yet it not be a simple topic. Simple versus simplex, right? Um, the notion of a photon. By the way, there's a neat article that I have. Um, I have the link to it somewhere. I know I can find it. Anyway, uh, charting off uh, the occurrence of the usage of photon. And it, uh, of course, I know photos is an ancient Greek word. Let's not get into that. That was a different uh, denotation and connotation in ancient Greece. But uh, it was coined uh, by a nut job called Leonard Trolland. And this was a guy uh, involved in optronics. Um, he actually was involved in a lot of freaky deaky stuff like psychical research and telepathy at Harvard University. He coined the term photon in 1916, and he used the term photon not to refer to any sort of particle nonsense. And of course, there's no such thing as a damn photon. I hear that word all the damn time, and I just laugh my ass off every time I hear about it because it's just rank, sticking, stinking, hardcore, materialistic atomism. There's no such thing as a damn light particle. He used it as a quote-unquote unit of illumination, which is fine. So Simon created a word in 1916, Leonard Trolland, a nut job who was involved in telepathy experiments at Harvard, to uh, refer to a unit of illumination. Well, there's a hardcore atomist called uh, Gilbert N. Lewis that came along in 1926. And he current, uh, coined the term a photon in reference uh, to atomism. This guy was a complete nut job and a hardcore materialist and atomist. Um, however, he started off lightly, and before he got into hardcore atomistic uh, denotation of the term photon, referring to an actual, he literally thought it was like an atomic structure. This is the insanity that we still live with today, that there's such thing as a light particle. Like, you know, when you turn on a light switch, there's just like a, an enormous stream of uh, atomic <laughs> And then we get into wave particle duality and uh, Einstein's insanity. Anyway, uh, Gilbert and Lewis uh, coined the term photon for the smallest unit of radiant energy. And uh, he said, it would seem, this is a halfway decent part, it would seem inappropriate to speak of these hypothetical, you see he himself called a photon a hypothetical entity. As a particle hour later he did, seem inappropriate to speak of one of these hypothetical entities as a particle of light or a light quanta or a light quant. If we were to assume that it spends only a minute fraction of its existence as a carrier of radiant energy. Then we actually get into uh, the, the moron Einstein who actually adopted Gilbert and Lewis's idea of the photon. It's like, ah, that is a good idea for, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a quantum. It's a, because all of quantum, by the way, quantum quantity. Do you know what quantity is? Quantity refers to mass and things countable. When you say quantity, what you're referring to is something that you can count. And all of these nut jobs in quantum mechanics, and I have nothing against math, are mathematicians. But you see, Mother Nature is like a hairy armpit chick with muddy feet and a hemp skirt. And she doesn't have a calculator, and she doesn't count crap, because the entire universe doesn't work off math. It works off force in motion, inertia and acceleration, centrifugal divergence, centripetal convergence, everything is capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity. <sighs> Magnetic permeability and dielectric permittivity. This is what Einstein said. He called it das Liquant. And uh, I forget the, what's the exact quote uh, from the idiot Einstein. Here we go. Here's the idiot Einstein. On the way of particle duality, it seems as though we must use sometimes one theory and sometimes the other. Jawohl. When at times we must use either, meaning the wave and the particle. We are faced with a new kind of difficulty. When you say, when, he, when Einstein said difficulty, and by the way, when I call Einstein an idiot, I'm actually agreeing with Tesla. There are many quotes of Nikola Tesla who called Einstein a fuzzy-haired crackpot, quote-unquote, a nut job. I actually called him a fuzzy-haired crackpot. He called him a, uh, a beggar dressed in purple robes. Purple robes means the robes of a king. Of course, uh, basically, this is Nikola Tesla calling Einstein a mental midget which Tesla was correct. So yes, Einstein was a moron. He never invented anything. Nothing today is based off anything Einstein did. However, everything today is based on something Nikola Tesla did, or Oliver Heaviside, or James Clerk uh, uh, Maxwell, or uh, Charles Proteus Steinmetz, Oliver Heaviside. He says, we are faced with not kind of difficulty. We, are f we have, uh, diff when he says difficulty, he means ignorance. 
when a scientist or mathematician says difficulty, what he means is we don't know what the hell's going on. And it's okay to be ignorant, but it's another thing to just invent arbitrary BS to fill in the gaps. And this is what mathematicians are really good at. We have two contradictory, contradictory pictures of reality. You see, here's another issue said from the, the lips of this, this knuckle-dragging moron, Einstein. There's nothing contradictory in Mother Nature. Contradictory by he means duality. Wave, particle, duality? Well, a wave is not a thing. A wave is what something does. And light is certainly not a particle. The notion that light is a particle is an arbitrary creation invented to appease the stupidity of mathematicians. These mathematicians who are, by definition, the founders of quantum physics. Here's two interesting words. Physics, meaning physical. Fields are not physical, for crying out loud. Quantum, meaning quantity, meaning you can count it. But you can't count a field because a field is not a particle. You can't count a field. The four Maxwellian field equations only define a field as a change over a period of time with a uh, resultant effect. But a field has never been defined by any branch of science. None, ever. A field, by the way, is an inertia or ether perturbation or a modality thereof of an inertia or ether perturbation because I know you're going to say well what is a field it's an inertia perturbation two contradictory pictures of reality mother nature and the cosmos has nothing contradictory the only thing that's contradictory is unintelligent ignorant unwise stupid um, idiot humans that don't know what the hell is going on and it's okay not to go, not to know. But when you think you know the answer, you never go searching for the answer. If you think you know the answer to something, you never go looking for the answer. That is something really, really important. That's something that people don't get. It's like, hey, you know, how do, what is life? Well, it's a comprised of photons, you know, and it's got blah, blah, blah. Well, that's not the case. Nobody goes looking for the answer to something that they think they know the answer to. Do you know how important a statement that is? That's a statement you won't read anywhere. This is something only a hardcore platonic monist like myself would actually say. It's very, very, very important. Separately, neither of them, meaning wave and particle, fully explains the phenomena of light. But together they do. <laughs> That's like saying this invisible creature behaves sometimes like a bird and sometimes like a fat elephant. So it is, a, it is the bird-elephant uh, duality. Uh, <laughs> sometimes this invisible creature, we know it flies, yavol, and sometimes it walks along the ground, leaves big footprints. Invisible creature, right? In this case, we're talking about light. Duality, difficulty, contradictory. These are the words of the idiot Einstein in reference to light. <sighs> well, that's not what light is. He, see, this is what Einstein called it. He called it das Lichtwand. A light quantity. Mathematicians and all of these a-holes, and they are absolutely all of them a-holes of the highest order, let me assure you, there's nothing wrong with being a mathematician. There's absolutely nothing wrong with math. But when you actually have idiots that only know how to count something, then they will quantify it. Oh my God! There's where the word quantum came from. They have to quantify it because they can't count it unless they can quantify it. But you see, a field, whether that be light, magnetism, dielectricity, they are not quantifiable. A field has no quantity. Sure, it involves an area. We know the affluence given uh, certain uh, Cartesian coordinates over a certain period of... No. Four Maxwellian field equations never define a field, nor do they ever quantize a field. They do, however, quantize an effect measured in joules or watts over a period of time with a certain vector, but that still never tells you what the hell a field is. All of quantum is based upon these mental machinations of these pathetic mathematicians who fundamentally cannot wrap their minds around anything that they cannot quantify. Quantify, quantum mechanics, quantify. Quantum physics. There's two hardcore words of stupidity. Quantum physics. What's quantum physics? Well, quantum physics is a, is a discrete study of particles and quantum interactions of fields. Jawohl. Isn't that interesting? It's not physical. So we got quantum physics. It's not physical. And quantum refers to quantity, or as Einstein said, das Lichtwand. Jawohl. 
It is not a quantity. It is not quantifiable. You cannot quantify or quantize a field. There's nothing there to count. Let me count the parts of the field. You can't. There's nothing there to count. The entire concept of a photon is an, uh, excuse me, the entire premise of the photon is an arbitrary concept created by Leonard Troland, a nut job who was involved in psychical research and telepathy research at Harvard. He died falling off a cliff while mountaineering. Must not have been too damn smart. And then Gilbert Ed Lewis, who then a hardcore atomist himself, um, did a condensation of what was later adopted. See, all this started in 1926, and if you actually follow the flowchart of all these scholarly papers that use the word photon, it goes like this for about 40 years, and then it peaks right at the epoch of materialism, making a huge resurgence, huge surgence in America, right around 1970. It goes flatline dead. Everybody's like, photon BS. For 40 plus years, and then around 1970, somewhere in there, it goes like, up like this, and it's just off the scale. Everybody, photons! Everywhere you go, it's a photons! There's no such thing as a freaking photon. It's a concept. Particle duality. Duality means that Mother Nature is a contradictory witch because nature has no dualities. Everything is, if not simple, it is utterly simplex. Mother Nature has no cards up her sleeve that to show a face card of duality. It's impossible for anything in the universe to be dual. The only thing that is a duality is within the minds who cannot wrap their brains around, uh, their understanding around what the hell is going on. That's fine. You can't call it a duality. It's a duality in your frigging mind, but it's not a duality in reality in Mother Nature. A wave is not a thing. A wave is what something does. This is a wave. Like, no, this is my hand moving. A wave particle duality my hand. Waving of what? Well, it's electromagnetic waves. Okay, so what are the electrical magnetic fields comprised of? Ah, well, this will actually is where they'll quantize it again. Like, well, virtual photons. This is not my, this is actually what these idiots say and write in their own demented, insane, straitjacket articles and books. Virtual photons, you know, like in a magnetism, it's a virtual photons. Virtual photons. That's just, well, no different than saying unicorns and leprechauns. Wave of what? Well, it's a wave of electrical and magnetic, whether circular or linear polarization. <laughs> you idiots. Not you people, these idiots. These people are morons. You see, mathematicians only to believe. They only believe their religion because mathematicians have to count stuff. Repeat after me. Mathematicians only know how to count stuff. Mathematicians only believe in discrete or demonstrable entities that can be counted, quantized. Oh, God, here comes the word quantum. This is, of course, pure, rank, vile, demented atomism. You know what atomism is? Materialism. Everything in the universe is bumping particles, you know, lights, ether, electricity. They don't believe in the ether. Actually, they, they've got a new word for the ether because you can't deny the ether. They call it uh, uh, the quantum vacuum or dark matter. This is what these idiots, because it's impossible to, uh, you know, just toss the baby out with the bathwater when it comes to the ether. It doesn't matter whether you call it inertia, or counter space or the ether, you can't throw it out. So what they do is invented a new word to go in its place. Dark matter, uh, quantum foam. God, there's about a dozen words that they use to refer to the ether without saying the word ether. There's no such thing as a wave particle duality. It's not a particle. Mother Nature has no dualities, and a wave is not a thing. A wave is what something does. Oh, it's waving. What is waving? Look, there's waves out on the ocean. Waves of what? No waves on the ocean. Waves of what? Waves on the ocean. What are the waves comprised of? Well, there are waves out there. There are waves of water. <laughs> a wave is not a principle. It is not a subject. It is not a noun. Not demonstrably, not denotatively a noun. It is connotatively a noun in a dictionary, but a wave is not a thing. A wave is what a thing does. So there's no such thing as a wave particle duality. The very premise is contradictory if someone uses, has five brain cells and knows how to apply platonic logic to uh, stupid people's ideas like these mathematical knuckle-dragging atomists who want to quantize everything. 
But a field is not a quantity, and it cannot be quantized, and it cannot be counted. Oh, but they think it can be. We're going to invent a particle for light. We're going to call it the light particle, the photon. Jawohl. And we're going to create another particle for what goes on uh, between the poles of a magnet. We're going to call it the virtual photon. This is literally what they call it. Virtual. It's, it's just rank atomism. These people are morons. They're absolute morons. They're not smart. Well, they think I have a PhD. That can't be. Oh, that you think that means something? <laughs> You're funny. They have PhDs. The, the, the papers are peer reviewed. Do you think if you think that means something, then you're not too smart yourself? They have a PhD on the wall, and the papers are peer reviewed. If you know what peer reviewed meant, you would never use those words because it doesn't mean. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these videos, always click the link below. Tell me to jump off a cliff. Either way, I'm right. Tell me I'm arrogant. Actually, I don't care if you think I'm arrogant. Tell me I'm wrong. You can go ahead and tell me I'm wrong, but I'm not wrong because you can't prove me wrong. No branch of science has ever defined a field, and a field is not a quantity. This is the birth of quantum physics, the study of fields and particles. But fields cannot be quantized, and they certainly the hell are not particles. Nor is there any such nonsense as a wave particle duality. Nor is there any such nonsense as a lot particle. <laughs> a photon. <laughs> oh my god, how stupid people are. Humanity has not evolved enough yet to understand what light is. It's really, really simple. But people are even more simple than that. They just don't get it. It just goes, they don't really care. Thanks for watching.